everyone, my name is Sam. Thanks for checking out this video. If you get to the end and liked it, then subscribe, bell notification, yada yada yada. Um, pretend you don't see the hair. We're having a heat wave in Alberta. So despite the fact that I live in the northern half of this country, it's like 35 degrees. I wasn't built for this, okay? Like, extreme cold, sure. I can handle that, but not this bullshit. Um, and yeah, I had a eh, not great reading month last month. And it was just like, I just didn't want to read. It wasn't the books themselves. I just didn't want to read whatsoever. So I'm, I put together a smaller list this month to then be like, okay, catch up on June TBR. Cause it wasn't like one or two books that you missed. It was several. So, um, that's what this month is going to be. It's like a half new, new TBR, half refresher TBR. So coming in from last month, uh, I'm still have the key to you and me. May the best man win. Yesterday is history to read. Um, I have a few more left that as I'm filming this that I think I can finish in the actual month of June. Um, and if I don't, I'll just fold them in. Uh, right. So, um, that is why this month is a little bit shorter and I didn't, uh, worry about finding books to fit in my like monthly goal. Um, thing I want to do each month, even though this probably does fill it. I'm just like, I'm not going to force myself to read a book that fits that and then like end up in a slump. And like, I just know that like, I haven't been super interested in reading certain things right now. Um, and also I seem to be like waking up one morning being like, you know what book I want to read? And it's a book that I haven't thought of in like three years. Um, so I'm leaving space for myself in this TBR to do that. And I'm also leaning into contemporaries because the books that I am getting through, the contemporaries are just, have been much more enjoyable for me. So that is what I'm going to do. So yeah, so you've got those those books I just mentioned there. The Key to You and Me by J. Robin Brown, which is a girl at like a horse camp and ends up her grandmother hires someone to teach her how to drive and a romance develops between the two girls. The uh, May the Best Man Win is like a sports contemporary YA. X is battling it out or something like that. Yesterday's Sister is a time travel with some um, historical fiction elements. Someone accidentally starts being able to time travel when they give a, get a liver transplant from someone who had that ability. And, um, then I'm going to try and pick up The Secret Bridesmaid. Um, this is the one I don't think I would have picked up for the cover, but it was mentioned in several, uh, work things, but the main character is, like, professionally, like, she gets hired to be in people's, like, wedding parties. I'm not sure what the purpose of that is, but when I heard that, I was like, honestly, that sounds like a job that would exist in 2021, honestly. <laughs> so, um, I am curious about this, and I think she ends up in an entanglement with the bride's brother I want to say it is and um I'm just curious about the whole concept of it and I'm going to pick up Trisha Levenseller's newest book Blade of Secrets this is the first in a duology um this is going to be one of the group reads in the TBR Beyond group so if you want to join in you can do that in the Facebook group and I just remember that there's like magical blacksmithingness in this and that honestly I really don't care what Trisha Levenseller could literally write like uh, a YA romantic western which is probably like when I think of hell that's there um for me and I would still buy it <laughs> and read it so I'm curious about that and she also just announced that she had got four more books in a deal I I'm one is set in the same world as whoops it is a contemporary uh uh not a contemporary it is a companion to the shadows between us it's uh following the main character in this book sister which i'm curious about that because um main character in that book's an absolute psycho and i loved her um so i'm curious about that and then another untitled duology i think it was something along the line it was a three or four book deal i was very excited to see that so just i get keep getting trisha levin seller one book a year basically and i'm very curious i was hoping for like magical blacksmith vibes from several books i've read a uh, wide contemporary books that i've read in the last couple of years and none of them have like quite hit the spot that I was looking for, but I have pretty high hopes with this one. And she is yet to disappoint me. Um, even the book that I liked by her the least, Warrior of the Wild, it was still a really good book. So I am very excited to read this one. Then I'm picking up Storm of Locust by Rebecca Roanhorse. This is the sequel to Trail of Lightning, which I read a while ago, but I feel like it's still pretty well in my brain. I also have just been like hesitant to pick this up because like there's supposed to be books three and four in the series but Rebecca Roanhurst says nothing about that and this came out like a year and a half two years ago now I want to say. Well like, what did it say in the published in the front anywhere? 
Sega. 2019, yeah. So it's a year and a half to two years ago. And she's had her middle grade book come out since then. And she's had uh, Black Sun come out since then. And she announced on Twitter this past week that the um, title and the cover reveal and whatever for the Black Sun sequel is coming like within early July. So I don't know what's happening with the rest of this world. There's supposed to be four books. So I was like, you know what, maybe I'll like give it a read and decide if I want to like hang around for years to eventually get books through her for. Um, and we'll kind of go from there. But it's a dystopian kind of westernish setting um, after kind of um, Navajo. It's set on the Navajo Reserve in the first one um, in the southern United States. And um, we have some characters from uh, Navajo folklore, mythology, um, who, who come into play. And so I am curious. I remember liking the main character of Trail of Lightning. And that's another thing. I don't know if I remember enough of Trail of Lightning to read this because I don't know how tightly tied together the plots are so I have space as well in this TBR that if I start reading this and I think I need to do a reread I'll go back and reread Trail of Lightning and then pick up Storm of Locusts. I am beyond excited I am going to be picking up The Queer Principles of Kit Webb uh, by Cat Sebastian. This is the first book I've read by Cat Sebastian even though I know they have like a giant back catalog. Um, I bought it because it popped up in several different places before it came out and recommended as like if you're a fan of one uh, of red white and royal blue and I was like Damn. All right. Sold. Uh, Kit has left his stand and deliver adventures behind him, but dreary days at his coffee house have begun to make him pine for the heady rush of thievery. When a handsome yet arrogant aristocrat storms into his shop, Kit quickly realizes he may be unable to deny whatever this highborn man desires. I want it. <laughs> I want it for that. That alone. I just, I want it. I want it. Then I'm going to pick up Sleeping Giants by Sylvian, Sylvan Nouvel. Um, I didn't know this until the other month. He's Canadian author, which pretty dope. I read The Test by him and that was a bonkers novella. It's so weird. Someone's taking like the British citizenship test and then gets held hostage. It's such a weird book. Um, but Sleeping Giants is one that seems to have like a pretty like devoted cult following. The people that I have read it have said like it's just really well written. Um, and I got an arc of the third book in this series like years ago through work and I was just like cool. I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I haven't read the first book so I'm picking up the first book finally because we didn't have it in our collection and me getting the arc made me buy the rest of the the series and I saw how many holds there were and requests for it so I'm hopeful about this I think it's supposed to be like sci-fi lit and that's genuinely kind of all I know um and I'm just curious like the the quality of the writing and the test was so good and I've been looking for another author that I just get attached to the writing like the way I have Trisha Levenseller or when I'm thinking of like Tracy Chi um, who just have like Roshni Trotsky I just have like iconically really good writing that I just it's so lovely that even if you don't like the plot or the uh, characters in the book you're still gonna want to read it because of how good the writing is right so I'm hoping this will be another one of those series for me. I haven't read a nonfiction in a while, and I've said this before, nonfiction's, I'm not a fan of memoirs, not a fan of like autobiographies, that kind of stuff, but like weird historical things. Like, not like, oh, what was it like being a soldier in World War II? It's like The Art of Butchering, which was like a weird book. So interesting though, about like the horrific things they used to do in medicine or um dark archives books about like that they use to bind books like the covers of them with human skin and animal skin and like how they test for that sort of stuff just like really weird stuff in history the art of poisoning that was another wow i read a lot of dark lit huh I also like true crime and nonfiction. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know. Anyways, Drunk. It is talking about kind of humans, like, relationship with alcohol. Like, it is something that has continued throughout all of these rises and falls of the empires. And, you know, we've tried prohibition and we've seen how that's gone in, in, in like, you know, the United States and Canada. And it's this whole, it's supposed, it's not, like, folklore based on, like, you know, Bob said this is why. It's tying in several different influ information and, and ideas and stances from a variety of different science spectrums. Um, and I'm, I'm incredibly curious about this. And it went on sale with Audible had, um, the entire site, if you remember, was, like, up to 70% off on every book on the website. And it went on and it was below the cost of a credit. So I grabbed it. <laughs> so I am incredibly curious curious about this one the cover is really cool too and I almost bought a physical copy but it was like almost $50 I think in Canada so I was like mm, 
I'm gonna read this first and find out if it's, if it's any good. So I am very, very curious about this one. I am going to, I decided to do a reread of uh, Thorn by Intasar Kan Kanani. I'm not sure if that's how you say their author's name. I'm so sorry. So I'm doing a reread of this. This is one of the best books I read. Was it last year? The year before. It was amazing. Why is that to see um, Golden Goose, right? Is the Golden Goose the princess? What's the proper... Can't remember. Anyway, someone like accidentally, not accidentally, someone essentially takes over the body of another person and like gets into a sticky situation. So I want to do a reread of this desperately. Um, and then I'm going to pick up the, I'm not sure if this is a companion or a sequel actually. I never even thought to look up because I was like, whatever, it's in the same world. And I thought this was the last of the series, but I found out since that there's actually going to be a third book. So, uh, children have been disappearing from across Manea for longer than uh, Amreya Ni Ansarim. I'm so sorry with these names. I'm just uh, can remember when her friend's sister is snatched. Ray knows she can't look away any longer, even if that means seeking answers from the royal court, where her country upbringing and club foot will only invite ridicule. Yet the court holds its share of surprises. There she discovers an ally in the foreign princess who recruits her as an attendant. Armand with the princess's support, Ray uh, armed with the princess's report, support, oh my god, uh, Ray seeks answers in the dark city streets, finding unexpected help in a rough around the edge of street thief with secrets of his own. And there's royals, so it's gonna be backstabbing. What else would you expect from the royals? I'm also going to be picking up Fire Fireheart Tiger by Aliette de Baudard. Um, this is pitched what this was pitched as the gold the Goblin Emperor, which love that book. Um, meets Hubble's Moving Castle in pre-colonial Vietnam world, uh, or inspired world. Sorry. Uh, so you know, again, novellas seem to be doing really well with me, and it's probably going to help, especially with my reading attention issues right now. I'm finally going to be reading Luck of the Titanic from Stacey Lee. Um, this is set, set uh, on the Titanic, as you might be able to tell from the title. And the two main characters, I believe it is, they're um, acrobats, they're Chinese British um, children from the sounds of it. I'm curious how that's going to happen. I'm always interested in what people will do with the Titanic just because it's such like a, there's so much fascination and mystery surrounding it. And I don't know exactly why, because I mean, there's other like ships. And like the whole concept of like the unsinkable ship isn't really the pitch that you think it is anymore. Like I get at the time why it was like such a big thing, but like now, like I, especially with, with how millennials and Gen Zs think, like I'm just automatically assuming that something bad is going to happen always. But I'm curious to see how this goes. And Stacey Lee has just, I've only read one of her books previously, um, The Downstairs Girls, but it was so fantastic. And I think it dealt, um, it didn't sugarcoat anything with um, talking about race. Um, and I'm just always especially interested in taking these periods that I can always place myself in when I think of the Titanic or when I think of, um, you know, just like growing up difficult and all that sort of stuff and then giving it to someone who doesn't look like me um, because those people existed in that time and in that space too. So I'm very, very curious to see what this book is like. I'm going to be picking up The Well of Ascension. Uh, I bought the first three books of the series years ago um, and I'm kind of slowly reading them and unhauling them. <laughs> uh, the first book was fantastic actually um, and I just the go and read the second one. It was, it was a lot in the first book but it wasn't as like terrifying of a high fantasy as I thought um, it was going to be and so everyone just seems to have big love for this series and so I'm gonna pick up the next one I've been on hold for the book for like four or five months the audiobook sorry so hopefully it's worth the wait <laughs> I was gonna try and read all four of the books in the Keeper of Velocity series the last four that I have sorry of the series this month but I don't know that I'm going to be able to so I'm just gonna put books uh five and six if I end up having the space to read seven and eight cool dope um uh, but for now, the plan is just to read five, which is Lodestar, and six, which is Nightfall um, of this series. They keep just getting slightly bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm actually really glad I waited to pick these up as a, an adult because this size would have been terrifying to me at, at like a children's age. That was one of the reasons I didn't read Harry Potter when I was younger, like growing up um, physically. I ended up having to read it in school for like grade five, 
I want to say it was or grade four or something like that. Um, but we listened to like a recording on a cassette tape. I remember vividly and some someone was narrating it pretending to be Hagrid and we read like a chapter a day at the end of the day. That was the thing. Because like after you get past like the se what, third or fourth book in Harry Potter, they're like chunkers. At least to me as an adult, as a kid, I was like, I'm not going to be able to read that. So this would have been just as terrifying to me. So I hope one of them will be able to outdo Everblaze. But right now, book three is like the best book I've read so far in the series. Then I'm going to be picking up uh, another novel. Actually, it's called Princess Floridina, I think it is, and the 40 Flight Tower. This is Tamsin Muir's novella, and I think it came out before the Gideon the Ninth series um, sale, and then that whole fandom like blew up. So excited. Um, this is her fantasy novella, and from the cover and from the general gist I got of it, um, it's like a Rapunzel y, potentially like Tangled y kind of book, which I was like, sign me up. It's a novella. Actually, the cover reminds me of Shrek. That's why I was super piqued, interested too. Oh, I also forgot. This is in my pile here. I'm also didn't get to In Deeper Waters because I tried to pick up once and I was in such a bad mood. Not from this book. I was just in a bad mood in general. I was like, I'm going to ruin any chance of liking this book. So I shut up and I'm going to read it this month instead because I just have such high hopes for In Deeper Waters. We got gay pirates. Gay pirating is what I want. And when I'm in a better mood. I don't want it to ruin it. That book especially. And the last book I have uh, planned at least is The River of No Return by B. Ridgeway. This is another one I've had for years this book. I miss, I'm assuming I got, yeah, I got it from Book Outlet. So like would be like three to four years ago now. I haven't bought a lot from Book Outlet in the last little while. Um, it's supposed to be time travel. That's kind of all I know and that's the reason what made me buy it. So 200 years after he was about to die in the, on a Napoleonic battlefield, Lord Nicholas Falcon wakes up in a hospital bed in 21st century London, and the Guild is a secretive fraternity of time travelers who helps him make a new life in the modern world, and they tell them uh, and tell him that there is no return, but Nick yearns for home. And back in 1815, the very woman Julia Percy finds herself the guardian of a family secret inherited from her en enigmatic grandfather, how to manipulate time. And I imagine those two beings are going to come together if he's trying to get home, right? So I am curious about that. I haven't read a time travel book in a while, I feel like. Sorry, my arm. I just, oh, I got my second dose of, of Pfizer. My arm is like, it's not as bad as the first dose. I was bracing for this. That's why I booked to take my appointment on a Saturday, hoping that I wouldn't end up having to miss work or something like that. But like the first dose I got, my arm, like within like five, 10 minutes, like it was warm. I was like, okay, like it's, it got a vaccine, right? And like my arm then became dead for like a day. So I got the vaccine like two, three, no, it's probably, what time is it? Like three to four hours ago now. And it's just starting to get sore. So it's not, it wasn't as immediate and it had, it's not as sore. We'll see. Anyways, but yeah, that's the game plan. Anyways, those are the books that I plan on reading uh, this month. I will put all of these in the Goodreads shelf and then link the Goodreads shelf to lot down below along with the rest of my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back. Let me know what you're going to be reading this month. If you've read any of these, what your thoughts were. Stay safe. Get vaccinated if you can. Wear a mask if you need to. Um, Black Lives Matter. Asian lives matter. Indigenous people matter. Uh, have a wonderful weekend. If you're in a heat wave, man, bless you. Good luck. Stay indoors. Wear sunscreen. Drink lots of water. Apparently not supposed to drink a ton of coffee, but like, don't know how realistic that's going to be with me. But yeah, that is, that is it. And I will see you all next Tuesday for what? Probably a June haul video. And that is it. Have a wonderful day.